I didn't just switch operating systems. I went one step further. I replaced every Windows application I relied on with a Linux alternative and forced myself to live with the consequences. No Windows apps in Wine. No, just this one thing on Windows. If an app didn't exist on Linux, I had to find something else or change how I worked. This video is about what that actually looks like in practice. I'm running Linux Mint 22, fully updated, cinnamon desktop, and everything you're about to see is something I used daily. Let's start with the most obvious category, web browsing. On Windows, Chrome and Edge dominate. On Linux, nothing changes emotionally. Chrome exists, Firefox exists, Brave exists. Your bookmarks sync, extensions sync, passwords sync. Within minutes, browsing felt identical. This was the easiest replacement of all, and honestly, it sets the tone. Linux is not a different internet. It's the same web, just without the operating system getting in the way. Next is file management. Windows Explorer has trained people for decades, and Linux Mint's file manager feels instantly familiar. Drag and drop works, search works, network drives mount cleanly, USB drives just appear. I didn't need to learn Linux here. The muscle memory transferred almost immediately. Now let's talk about office work, because this is where most people get nervous. Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint were replaced with LibreOffice Writer, Calc, and Impress. For normal documents, letters, invoices, notes, spreadsheets, and presentations, the transition was smooth. File compatibility with Microsoft formats was good enough that I rarely thought about it. Were there edge cases? Yes, complex Excel macros and heavily formatted Word documents can still be tricky. But for everyday work, LibreOffice didn't block me once. PDFs were actually better on Linux. Viewing, annotating, and signing PDFs felt lighter and faster than on Windows, without needing extra paid tools. Now, media playback. On Windows, VLC is king. On Linux, VLC is still king. No codecs to hunt, no mystery errors, video files just played, audio just worked. This was another zero friction replacement. For image editing, things got more interesting. Adobe Photoshop doesn't exist on Linux in any official way. I replaced it with GIMP. This required a mindset shift. GIMP is powerful, but it doesn't pretend to be Photoshop. Once I stopped expecting Photoshop shortcuts and workflows, it became a solid tool for photo editing, thumbnails, and basic design work. Not perfect, but absolutely usable for content creators who aren't doing extreme professional retouching. For vector graphics, Adobe Illustrator was replaced with Inkscape. Logos, icons, SVG work, and simple designs were all possible. Again, different workflow, same end result. For video editing, I replaced Adobe Premiere Pro with Kden Live. This was one of the biggest surprises. Kden Live handled timeline editing, cuts, transitions, audio tracks, and exports reliably. It's not Premiere, it doesn't have the same ecosystem, but for YouTube videos, it got the job done without crashing or demanding subscriptions. Screen recording was replaced with OBS Studio. This one felt like cheating because OBS is already industry standard and works brilliantly on Linux. Recording tutorials, desktop captures, and voiceovers felt identical to Windows. Now, let's talk about file compression and utilities. WinRAR and 7-Zip weren't missed at all. Linux Mint handles archives natively. Zip, tar, rar extraction worked right from the file manager. No pop-ups, no licenses, no nags. For cloud storage, OneDrive doesn't have an official Linux client, but alternatives exist. Browser access works perfectly. Third-party sync tools fill the gap if needed. Google Drive worked fine through the browser for most use cases. Now, gaming. Windows gaming tools were replaced with Steam and Proton. Many games ran shockingly well. Some ran better than expected. Some didn't run at all. This was the biggest depends on your library category. Casual gaming and single player titles were mostly fine.
competitive games with strict anti-cheat were still a problem. For system maintenance, this was one of the most refreshing changes. No registry cleaners, no driver booster tools, no antivirus pop-ups screaming at me. Updates, drivers, and system maintenance were handled quietly by the system itself. One update manager, one click, done. Now, here's the honest part. Not every replacement felt equal. Some apps required relearning habits, some features were missing, some workflows slowed down at first. But something interesting happened after a few weeks. I stopped thinking in terms of replacement apps, I started thinking in terms of tasks. Instead of, I need Photoshop, it became, I need to edit this image. Instead of, I need Word, it became, I need to write. Linux didn't give me identical tools, it gave me sufficient tools that respected my control over the system. So, here's the verdict. Replacing Windows apps with Linux alternatives is absolutely possible for most people. Not instantly, not without adjustment, but without the horror stories you've probably heard. If your work is creative, web-based, document-heavy, or developer-focused, Linux Mint offers real, mature alternatives today. If your workflow depends on one very specific Windows-only application, Linux will challenge you, hard. This experiment didn't prove that Linux is better than Windows. It proved that dependence on specific apps is often stronger than dependence on the operating system itself. And once that dependence loosens, the switch becomes far less scary. That's the real lesson.